With the end of 2023 finally upon us or around the corner, depending where you live. Just like every other human being in the world, I'm wrapping up the year. Remembering the positives, the negatives, and everything in between. Now, Game of the Year, it's one of the most prestigious events. I get in the Harrison Awards, so a lot of people have come to the event, so thank you for turning up. Now, obviously, I have two contenders, two battlers, two fighters who are fighting to claim this beloved prize sitting next to me on this here dear sofa here. So, let's get into what they are. Now, funnily enough, both... Both games actually didn't release this year, which probably tells you all you need to know about the current state of gaming. But my two favourite video games of 2023 is Cyberpunk 2.0, Phantom Liberty and Resident Evil 4. So I'm going to go into things I liked, I didn't like, and then I'll come to a conclusion at the end. So stick around if that's what you want, or just skip to the end, who fucking cares. Cyberpunk. Cyber. Punk. So my intro to Cyberpunk, I played it around three or four times now, I have to admit. So I played it first on the PS4 when that bad boy came out. All the bugs, all the glitches, I persevered and completed it. Not even a joke, can you believe it? I deserve an award just for doing that. When the PS5 version came out, I played it again. And then I bought it on the PC when Phantom Liberty came out because I did actually sell my PS5 because I went away for a little while. So if you have not played this game because you were thrown off because they decided to release it when it was as raw as when a chicken still has its feathers on, then I would tell you, you need to get into this one of the greatest games of our generation everything from the music which you know i've even listened to on spotify which is weird i don't do that to the gunplay the driving now i suppose the biggest part to the new dlc is the choices and the repercussions of your actions even the smaller gigs you know the little green light things that most people won't even complete they have multiple endling endlings multiple endings multiple ways to get results if you do well you will get more money better weapons even get a better dialogue with some characters like mr hands for example but that might not be the right moral decision the, in terms of is it the right decision for all parties involved you know if I hate the suit type people I always want to fuck them up every time I do it because they're just greedy pigs ink, ink, ink. So, you know, there's real sort of, well, this is the right choice in terms of getting money, weapons, but it's not the right moral question. Mr. Hands won't like me if I do this, blah, 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 blah. There's loads of different ways to do things. Stealth, so much better, so much more enjoyable and actually fun. And probably the recommended way to do it. Incredible characters. I mean, I have to admit, Johnny Silverhand is one of the, the best characters in video games, period, man. He's so good at just what he brings to the table. I've heard people say he's in it too much, and I just, I honestly don't know what they're talking about. Him and V, their relationship is just... Uh, you know it's great you start off sort of uncertain do you like this guy and then you build off that and eventually you know so, sometimes i'm like no i want johnny to come me he deserves it you know what i mean like he's a really good character the dlc characters are great songbird reed they're all interesting or many plots and turns you know you like someone for a minute you realize they're actually kind of a twat and then <laughs> you know you hate them and you think oh why did i do that i don't actually like these people and it, that, that's because they're real morally ambiguous characters they flip the coin and that's what they're like like reed's not a good guy but he's cool as fuck johnny's not a good guy but he's cool as fuck you know i have a i have an unhealthy obsession as well with pan am i once played the game through as a woman and i hated it and didn't actually finish it because i couldn't bone pan am in the spaceship i love her and if she was real i would be her number one stalker but don't tell anyone that all the different endings are emotional good bad evil whatever it is you've done i've completed all the endings except the dlc ending i've not done that one yet i did complete the dlc but i've just not completed the game yet they added like this dash feature which makes you able to fl double jump and fly basically it's really a great thing to implement into the game sometimes i thought running was slow boring and trying to traverse the area was a waste of time but now with this dash you can shoot everywhere fly boom boom bang brilliant one thing i'm a little uncertain on is the way you spend skill points and i think I, maybe i've just not you know got my head around it yet but i am a bit uncertain how it is i think i preferred it last time but it makes more sense how they've done it now you know you need to put these blue points in to get your yellow point that sort of thing so it makes sense but i, I just haven't quite wrapped my head around it fully like i did the last one but one thing i love is a cyberware they completely changed how it works so you can't just get everything there's different rankings of cyberware and then obviously you can't get too much or they become a bit of a cyber psycho it's really cool addition and uh, i think it's a, a great way of dealing with it you can't now just be a, an op god you've got to make choices do you want that well you can't have that if you want that you also can't have that it's good but one thing i want to say uh, sort of like corporate greed is shown throughout the whole game and yet it's kind of funny because corporate greed led to cyberpunk's downfall and yes inevitable rise again but you know people forcing the game to be released when it wasn't ready I found it funny anyway. But if you want to play this game, here's some advice. Play the game. You need to. Get past Act 1, do all the Jackie stuff, then do loads of side stuff. Level up, upgrade, find cool weapons, cyberware, all that good stuff. Meet cool characters. It's awesome. You'll fall in love with it. Finally, once you've had a good amount of fun and you're getting maybe slightly bored, game, get back into the main campaign. Now, a few complaints. I'm balanced. I had three or four crashes, which is kind of annoying, but it happens. There's still quite a few bugs. There's this really annoying thing where sometimes people's faces don't load in and they're like smooth, like plasticine, like you can't see 
obviously there are, I, I don't know how to describe it it's weird I, I think the game is begging for a third person mode I really do I think you know similar to like in a, a Bethesda title we can you know go first third something like that I, I think it's crying out for it to be honest and I think the next game there will be and just on the bugs there were a few where things didn't work things didn't happen uh, but most of the bugs were actually found in the DLC there's my opinion on Cyberpunk good game good game now we're going to go into Resident Evil 4 now Resident Evil just going to give you a bit of background first Resident Evil I played was Resident Evil 4 the original and I well actually no I didn't I used to play on the Xbox 360 with my friend Resident Evil 5 I think the one where there's two characters you play is like and it's voiced by the same guy who voices Cal Crane and it was a demo though but you could play the survival like Call of Duty Zombies thing we just used to play that that's all I ever had an experience to it it was hard we sucked end of now I really liked the idea of playing Resident Evil but I was a bit of a babby and then I played Resident Evil or the original Game Pass and I hated it I can't lie I'm, I was a young man still am and I just didn't quite agree my my person didn't agree shall we say with the slow and long controls and it just felt quite outdated to me I think it's generation generational thing I admit it it's you know it's not the game's fault a lot of people love the game and I probably will play Resident Evil 4 again one day the original just to see what it's like and the differences I then played the first person Resident Evil started with Resident Evil 6 and or 7 and then went on to Resident Evil 7 or 8 I can't remember what they are uh, and then I finally understood it to be honest I really 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 liked the games they were really really cool I then bought Resident Evil 2 when that came out and yeah it was great fantastic um the remastered version obviously uh leon is one of my favorite resident evil characters so that when resident evil 4 was announced my ears were immediately pricked up so when i pre-ordered it my expectations were high as a snoop dog on a sunday morning and boy they were not only surpassed they were smashed beaten bruised pulped broken down I've not played many games back to back but resident evil 4 i played back to back straight back to back I played it on the medium difficulty you know just normal and then played it on the hardest because I was in love with it that so, so much I can't deny. One thing I think goes unappreciated about this game is the actual map itself. So it's not an open world game, but it's like large explorable locations. You start on this boat, you have this huge area you can search around there. And the first time I thought I explored quite a lot, but it turns out I actually missed most of the important shit, like the starting, the really good pistol you get at the beginning. I realised this on my first playthrough and in my second, you know, I took my time, I found everything, did all the secret little side stuff, tried getting as much money as I could to upgrade all the weapons I possibly possibly good there's a sense of progression in the game it's quality you start off well shite to to put it blankly like you know you die all the time weapons are like potato guns your knife is a knife what an annoying piece of metal that was whoever created that jesus but when you grade yourself and you spend time exploring you find pesos or whatever the currencies are you get more confident and you're able to take on huge hordes and take on huge creatures the boss fights bloody hell the boss fights are incredible some of the best i've, I've honestly ever played from the trolls the castle battles to fighting giant tentacle monsters even some of the smaller bosses like the fat death things with force masks on they're just horrifying but still dangerous and deadly and using your stealth to help him out to kill the actual other bad guys you know like the the human ones or if you can call them that because they'll just kill anything it's really good one that sticks out is that one where these monsters who are deaf are cha chained up uh, basically as soon as you make a noise they break out and they can help you by killing them they murdered me countless times and the first time i really struggled to it and then the second time the harder difficulty i perfect my dodging shooting skills i was able to understand what they would do absolutely smoke the fools i got the key and got the f out there it was pretty cool because it, it makes you feel like a true beast the stealth really 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 interesting and actually helps you you know if you can take out four or five bad guys before you have to whip out your gun it, it it's really saves you a lot of time and probably a lot of deaths it looks beautiful i don't need to tell you that you'll see from the gameplay it's a beautiful game to say you know some of the remasters we've seen this this is not a remaster this is, might as well be a whole new game you know some of them lot back there are absolutely shite this gives all remasters a high high bar to reach more my the story is wild as every other resident evil game but it's also got a heartwarming sort of level to it I'm trying to think what else is there oh the final area is really cool you go to like this military island and there's loads of like tank uh, not tanks like turret deaths doom is oh insane it's so much good stuff in that last it's like a, a culmination of your skills to you bring it together and what show us what you can do now and it really pays off uh leon i've said i love him he's amazing in this ashley's not as whiny as i thought she would be they've removed and changed some of the lines from all the terrible memes I've seen of her and you know the villains are some of the best I've seen in video games for a fucking long time so look 
that's both both games sort of rattled through slightly um you know i'm not a professional reviewer if anything i'm a donkey who plays video games to stimulate the brain if you do that then you'd enjoy these two games both of them are, are great but there's got to be a conclusion so after everything i've said and i'm going to give you my honest thoughts there's only one winner for me i think deep down it's got an amazing story amazing characters good graphics gameplay stealth gunplay a crafting system and i purposefully made that really unclear as that could be probably 50 games or at least both the games i've mentioned so the winner the one who takes the award home you're welcome resident evil 4 i love this game can't wait for more resident evil with leon i can't wait for more resident evil other stuff you know it made me play other games in the franchises which i think you know i bought three it's you know it was good fun for 30 minutes until the credits roll but that's it let me know you you uh, agree yay nay possibly take care gamers i salute you stay strong out there and i want to know what you're playing in this new year let me know down below